What is going on, Salt Strong Nation? I have got probably one of my favorite trips I've ever taken offshore to share with you guys today. I just went out recently and had a banner day with my buddy Ryan there and my neighbor Chip right there who is a retired offshore fishing captain. So we had a lot of really good catches on the boat to show for you guys. A lot of really great tips to share on snapper, tons of other different reef species, and even some of the schooling mahi-mahi. We got some amazing footage with them. But we're gonna start straight from the top. This was literally the first spot we stopped at our first drop and we immediately had some action. Now I want to share with you guys really quickly a lot of the spots that we picked are available for you guys to see on the new feature that we have in Smart Fishing Spots that actually highlights exactly where artificial reefs, shipwrecks, and other things of that nature are. Really incredible tool, but we'll go ahead and jump right into the catch footage now to show you guys how easy it is to get onto these fish if you know where to look. Boy. Ryan's on immediately. Get him, boy. Give me a better run. Get him, boy. That'll get it done. You can put a lot of bend in that rock. Oh, there we go. There we go. Up, there we go. This thing hit a pretty big jig. Literally, first drop, first spot. We're over this rig. Me and Ryan immediately pop some snapper. Woo! Well, I put one on the jig. I'm gonna see if I can get one on the power prawn while Ryan horses his monster in. All right, so Ryan and I busted off, so now we've got the uh, the three ounce going out. Man, I'm getting these little taps. I'm not getting that bump. Oh, there we go. That was pretty daggone immediate there, man. That's on the prawn, baby. That's on the prawn. It's that little shrimp jig. Oh. Uh, I think it's... Yeah. Snapper, buddy. That's a keeper. On the prawn. That's what you like to see. So off to a pretty good start, lots of action, but being that we were in a flat skiff, the storm that had started to form off the bow was a little concerning. How's that prawn doing? Did you get any more yeah, I just got whacked. I was looking at I was looking at the clouds and I got hit and I didn't I wasn't ready to set the hook. I've been watching this line right here and it's moving that way. I can't see where that line's moving, but I got I can see this line right here. So all we could do for the time being was just keep an eye on it and make sure it wasn't going to be coming straight at us. For the moment, it did not look like it was. So we just continued to jig and see if we could pick up some more fish. Get him, Chip. Oh, man, that's a fish. Woo, boys. Doubled up. Got color? Oh, nice one. That's a good one. That's not a bad fish. That's a good fish. What, eight pounder? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good fish. Now we're getting into a quality fish. We got him, uh, 30 feet off here. Something like that. I stopped it before it hit bottom, but I was pretty deep. Get her. Well, that porpoise wants your snapper chip. That's a nice one. There we go, two snapper. So even though we were on some real good fish, we caught a bunch more snapper in that spot. The storm definitely was on a path to hit us. Now our best bet, because it had us pinned offshore, we could not get back in, was to go hide behind one of these tankers and wait it out. Now luckily the storm actually did not end up coming to us, but what we found at these tankers was absolutely incredible. About a uh, hundred mahi in a school were all bunched up under these tankers. When we rolled up, they heard our engines and they swarmed the boat and we just started throwing everything we had. We didn't even have time to change from our snapper setups, so we just were not prepared for these fish. But as you guys will see, we made some adjustments to actually start getting on them pretty good. This hook's too big. Yeah, we need a smaller bait. Smaller bait for sure. We gotta leave? Can't fish here? We can? Yeah. Oh, he's gonna start the propeller. 
Got it. So luckily we did not have to leave. We just had to get out of the way of the ship that was undocking and moving from the other one that had been anchored. But the goal here was to hook up with a Mahi and keep it around so that the rest of the school would not leave. As Chip explained, he's been on a lot of schools like this. The big goal is to always have a fish hooked up at one time until the next person hooks up and that will keep the school around. As you guys are going to see here, these are incredibly social fish. You'll actually watch the school follow the one that's hooked up and that just gives you an opportunity to get the other guys on the boat on fish. Now, I was literally able to put one in the rod holder while we got Ryan a different bait on. We were struggling to find baits that were small enough for these fish. We literally tried to find some inshore tackle, 16th ounce hooks, and we were putting them on the prawn. And that was pretty much the only thing we had outside of a small jig head uh, that I was using for offshore jigging, really had it ready for cobia. But that was what was working for us, was just rigging small lures up, hooking up with one of these fish, and getting the rest of the school to stay by it as you guys can see incredibly social fish you just need to give them a lot of action to get them to bite so the next step was to just create the rotation and that was once someone else got hooked up ryan actually had hooked up over to the right you see his fish on the line you'd swing that first fish that was hooked up into the cooler and then the next guy would get back out there and jig around the school where that fish was hooked up with so ryan's fish is over in the left hand corner hooked up and the school's just kind of hanging around which gave me and chip an opportunity to just continue jigging until we finally would hook up with them but our big problem was those baits were still a little big so i started trimming down the trailer on my little hook uh, and that made all the difference in the world just to have a smaller bait for these fish to go after as you guys will even see it got down to the point where I took all of the feathers off and ended up just fishing a bare jig head I got one got one look at him right here Woo you're gonna figure eight him Oh my goodness! Oh! Get him? Nice. All right, mine's going in the cooler. On the prawn, baby! Where are they at? Right here, dude. There's a million of them right out in front of us. Just throw What are you throwing? He threw the yeah, prawn. It's just too much current. He threw that prawn and literally just figure eighted it right next to the boat. They're right here. I just have one hit. Here he is. Here he is. You got to rip that thing, man. See? Look at him go. There we go, got one. Oh, he's off. So a couple other important notes about these mahi that I learned while I was out there was that they're really great at getting off of the hook and you need to just invoke as hard of a strike as you can, make sure you get a really good hook set uh, and try to keep those fish down in the water. I didn't do a great job of uh, keeping the fish down, letting them have a little bit of slack and every time you give them too much tension, it'll bring them up to the surface and they will jump and throw that hook almost every single time. Now, another really important thing is that when you do get these fish on the boat, make sure you get them directly into the cooler as fast as you can and you get that lid shut because they are so hard to get a handle on if you don't really get them that first try. They flip all over the place. They're really hard to grab. Uh, they, they're super slippery, a lot like trout are. And you can see the chaos that it causes, especially when you've got a bunch of guys trying to get hooked up with another fish. And a big thing is just make sure that you don't let one that gets off the hook get back in the water because it'll scare the rest of that school off. Uh, now, one final note is the retrieve for these fish because we really had to dial that in. Uh, need to make sure that you got something a little bit heavier that can get a few feet under the surface and you rip it really hard. You saw those really hard pops that I was given, but it's almost a really serious reaction strike, much like a top water. Try and give them these like real hard pops right here and then let it sink. Like four or five. Yep, there we go. 
So pretty easy there, just making some really hard pops and getting those reaction strikes from these fish. They're super quick, so you almost can't even fish it too fast. But we did this for a really long time, just running that rotation. But one big note is that anytime you see ships that have been anchored for a while or any kind of floating structure that you can tell has been out there, like wooden boards or barrels or things like that, it's a good place to look for mahi. They're not structure oriented in the fact that they hang on like rocks or stuff like snapper, but you can consistently find them on kind of floating structure, weed lines, things like that but we caught those mahi for a really long time and eventually made our way to another spot where we we're looking to maybe catch some bigger snapper to finish up our limit i hadn't even gotten my gopro rolling before i got the first hit oh literally didn't even get a chance to turn on the gopro feels like a small snapper maybe oh yep hit. no that that was on bottom i made one jig up How's that little rod doing? Great. I'm enjoying it. I think you got some backbone. You need to get a big fish on there, though. Yep. Yeah. Snapper. There we go. Yeah, that ain't bad. But he's a little small for what we're trying to shoot for. So I had switched to single inlines on these jigs because we were fishing a different type of structure that had a little bit more hangups and I was also hoping to avoid some of the smaller fish but unfortunately that just was not the case. There was a lot of these little juvenile red snapper around. Again, a lot of these were keepers, but I was just trying to hook into some better fish. Now on this next drop, I did actually end up getting something a little different than a red snapper, actually the first of the species that I've caught in Texas. There you go, Wyatt. That was off the bottom about 20 feet. Oh, I, I still got him? I don't know if I still got mine. Yeah, I still got him. This is uh, AJ. So that's the first amberjack that I've caught in Texas. I've gotten quite a few in Florida, but first one in Texas, which was pretty cool. Chip actually had had a solid red snapper on as I was landing that AJ, you guys saw that. But unfortunately we had a little bit of an issue, even though we were venting these fish as they were going down, they were getting snatched up by big barracudas like that. So instead of feeding a bunch of snapper to barracudas, we decided to switch spots again, try and find some waters that were not gonna have all kinds of crazy predators in them. And luckily we were able to get onto some more fish at another one of these spots again that's on that smart fishing spots map. Ryan's on. There we go. There we go. No, not the mangrove. Here we go. That's uh, about the same size. Bang! There he is. So again, still not catching the quality of snapper that we're after to finish out our limit. So I tied on a new lure, which is a giant six ounce Spro Bucktail. We have some smaller versions of these in the shop. Maybe you can use them in shallower water if you're fishing some of those West Coast Florida reefs. Uh, but I rigged up one of these power prawns on this bucktail and uh, found myself in the final spot, finally getting the fish that I was after. Got him. This feels like a better fish. So 
So this ended up being the largest snapper of the day for me to finish out the limit. And we headed in after this again, really fun day of catching again, no monsters, but it was just really fun to get out, catch a bunch of different species at all these different types of spots. Now, if you guys want to pick up any of the lures that you guys have seen or check out that smart fishing spots reef locator tool, definitely join us in the salt strong insider club. There's going to be a full insider report and a tutorial on how to use that reef locator tool to get you onto some more fish fast. And if you have not heard of the salt strong insider club, we're the best online fishing club out there because we guarantee we're going to help you catch more fish, save time and money on tackle and help you make friends fast, or we make it free for you. It's a really awesome deal. We hope you guys enjoyed this video and we really hope you'll join us in the salt strong insider club soon.